Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a gorgeous 16 by 20 inch Sunrise Mountain version number five. They keep selling, so I'm gonna keep painting them. This one came out fantastic. Really worked on the sky and the clouds. Our, our mountains are a different shape. Our foreground's a little bit different. So not trying to paint the same painting all the time. Trying to keep you guys interested in doing brand new things and showing you cool techniques. And maybe you never saw any of the other ones. So, uh, but you're excited about painting this painting, that's for sure. So check the description down below. Find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're gonna do it just like this. Holy cow, we're back again today on a 16 by 20 inch canvas that we've prepped with our white gesso from Artist Loft. This is level one white acrylic gesso, nice and nasty. Just makes a nice smooth surface, fills in all those potholes for us. Now we're gonna cover our canvas in Bob Ross liquid white oil paint. Give the jar a nice shake, open it up, and then whatever gets trapped inside the lid, that is gonna be just enough to use on our canvas today. So we're gonna dip our two inch brush right into the top of that. Don't need to get it all the way up the bristles or anything. Kind of dump it in different places all over because with this gesso on it, it's gonna be very slippery compared to a dry canvas. It's gonna spread a lot further, a lot faster. So work it in, stretch it to its limit. And if you have to fast forward through this section, I understand, I understand. I totally get it. You already know how to do this, but some people don't. So we have to kind of show you. You never know who's gonna watch a video. They never watch them in the same order as you watched them in. They're not even shown in the same order. Some people don't even know about me still. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that someone doesn't even know about me still? Let's get the littlest more on the brush. A little bit down there, a little bit over there. And then again, we're just gonna stretch it and reach everywhere. If you have too much on your brush, it's gonna fling off. So keep a very small amount. You can always go back and get more or shake up your jar again, put it back in your lid. All right, you don't have to go straight into the, the tub of paint right up onto the canvas like old Paint with Josh does, right? I have a fair amount of paint flung everywhere all over the wall in here. So don't be discouraged if you do as well. Let's see, back and forth, back and forth across our whole canvas till it's nice and uniformly wet. We can see it. I can look down the side and be like, hey guys, that is nice and covered, just like that. Let's put this away. Now I have an old nasty jar of liquid white that barely has anything left, but I like this little Petri dish. So we like to pour just a little bit inside and it's all gross. I would never use it to like prime the canvas anymore because it's had little bits of color dipped into it or not fully cleaned out of the lid. So, but it's perfect just to mix in for what we need. Get a little pile of that. And then we're gonna show you what colors we have today. Uh, cadmium yellow, bright red, dark sienna, which is the lighter color of the browns. Thalo blue, which is the lighter color of the blues. Alizarin crimson, midnight black, <laughs> midnight black, and titanium white. Now we're gonna start to do a sunset up here, very simply and easily. But first, my television is not turned on. It shows me your view. A lot of times with this super bright light, it's hard for me to see what you guys see, or I see it at a different you know, hue of color, or something is wrong. So I like to be able to look over here, and if I'm not looking directly at you, don't be discouraged, right? I have to be able to see what I, what you see. So it's like, a, it's like a triangle of you going on over here. Now let's wash this brush off. Now we use odorless mineral spirits, keep your house nice and smell free, and really old, nasty, big, thick cups, right? You don't need a very thin cup, you need a very thick cup. Hold all of our thinner in. So I do have a short video or a TikTok video or a Facebook reel or Instagram reel on how we clean the brushes. So if you don't know, you can go find that. Right into the old bucket, comes out nice and clean. Fantastic, all right. Now, we're gonna grab a nice clean, dry fan brush. We're gonna go into our white and into our yellow. A Little bit of white on the brush, right into the yellow. It makes it super bright yellow. Gorgeous, right? Just like that, onto the fan brush. We're gonna grab our old nasty cup, old trusty Dixie cup, and let's say we, I don't know, we go just right off center, about center, but off center to the right, right here. We're just gonna push down and just leave a nice circle right around the edge of our cup. It'll be nice and thick. Doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be the, the perfect round circle. It could be a little bit bigger, so you wouldn't like, oh no, now I've ruined it, right? No, it doesn't matter. All we're gonna do is just blend that. So we're gonna to start to take this guy in just from every 
hour, right? So 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? We're going around the clock. Rock around the clock tonight. Do, 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 do. Don't mind me, I'm just gonna sing and paint. Do, 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 do. Okay. Knock it off, Josh. Everyone's turning off their, their videos immediately. Like, I didn't come here for him to sing. I came to watch him paint. All right, let's take a one-inch brush because it makes it a little bit easier. We're gonna start to pull that yellow away, right? Just away from itself so it's not so thick. And then we're gonna pull it into that little center area, make it nice and bright. And then we're really not gonna touch that area very much at all. Now. I do need to mix up a little bit of the red into this white and yellow mixture that we have right here to make this gorge, gorgeous orange color. Is this going to be one of those videos where Josh can't even talk? How are we supposed to learn if we can't even hear what he's saying? Or if he doesn't even know what he's saying? There we go. Nice, gorgeous orange color. It needs to be a little bit deeper, darker than you think because it's going to start to mix and blend as we put it up here. So into our one inch brush, just around the edge. Right? You see how it starts to get lighter and lighter and lighter as you have less paint on the brush. It starts to mix in with that, that liquid white and really starts to go really bright on us. So if you want to maintain those colors, you need to have a fair amount of paint and have it be a little bit darker than it was before. Now let's go into the red. A little bit of that red up in here. You see it's a little darker. All right, let's grab a little bit of that crimson too. Just red and crimson together. Oh yes. All, right, all we're doing is just dumping it on. Dumping on a little area of color, and then we can go back and blend it all out, right? It's all about two inches, maybe two inches from, you know, width-wise, about the size of our brush and a couple swipes. You judge it like that. Let's see, a little bit of our pinkish, gorgeous crimsony color. Now we start to do a little bit of crimson, a little bit of blue. As we come up here, look at that beautiful dark purple. But again, you gotta keep enough paint on the brush to have it stay that beautiful dark color. Otherwise, it's gonna really wanna mix in with all these gorgeous bits of that, that Bob Ross white that we put on there. Anything we mix with that's gonna wanna go lighter. So, just like that, a little bit more of the crimson. Ooh, nice and red side over here. That's gorgeous. As always, we try to cover the sides. It just takes a few seconds to take whatever the last color was that you had on your brush as, as the furthest color away and cover the sides with that color. And that way you can hang your canvas, you don't have to frame it, you can hang it, it'll be finished on the edge at least with one little bit of color is all you really need versus an unfinished white edge of a canvas, right? Just make it nice, just takes a few seconds to get it all mixed in up there totally doing it blind here. We can't even see what we're doing. Let's see, let's come over here. Always takes a few more swipes to get it all the way in there. All those little pores of the canvas, especially if you don't prep it with your Bob Ross liquid white first. You gotta prep the sides just like we prepped the, you know, the front of the canvas. So, a little bit more crimson, get a little bit more purpley. There we go. And now we've got this beautiful mess on the canvas. All these gorgeous colors, all off of one brush. Didn't even need to wash it, right? As long as you go in that progression, you don't need to wash the brush until we get to the end. Now we wash the brush. Now we waschen und uns brushens. Okay. Now we're gonna be very, very, very light-handed. Go back to that dry two-inch brush that we used earlier to put the liquid white on the canvas. Really don't wanna touch our white circle because it's so gorgeous. So let's just start to mix these in just very softly, right? Just making little circles. Don't want to bring too much of the orange into the yellow and vice versa, too much of the yellow out into the orange. And just start to grab it along the edge, mix and mix and mix and mix and mix, very lightly, like very light pressure, not pushing really hard. All right, if you push really hard, a lot of that color is going to want to grow. So let's keep it in there, just using our light colors right now, because as soon as we go into that dark color, it's going to want to come down here and interrupt everything. It's going to be like, hey guys, what are you doing? What's going on over here? Can, uh, can I come in too? Me and all my dark color buddies, can we all come in and join the party? Look at this. The more and more and more you mix it, the softer and softer it becomes, right? More and more and more and more and more. And all this dark color is gonna wanna grow into our center. So that's why we like to leave it a little bit out. 
just like that. And it can grow, it can grow. You just don't want it to cover your very dark center area, right? It's gonna end up eventually changing the color of this yellow to something else, as long as you're blending it correctly. Look at that, it starts to come in. You know what we can do is switch to a, switch to a clean dry brush, it doesn't have any paint on it. I'm gonna try to pull that color back away and just mix it very softly and very lightly using two brushes. You may have to go back and wash your one brush. There we go, nice and light and soft. And then we can't really tell where those lines are. Where is our, our lines of color, right? Nice soft bit, can't even really tell like what colors we even had on the brush. It's all this soft kind of progression, light to a little bit darker, a little bit darker, and then we're gonna come into our dark area. So we can switch back to that brush that has all the crimson color on it, really grab it from its top up here and start to pull it in. Look, it wants to grow. So kind of leave our little streaks in our sky. And now we're starting to decide maybe we got a, a little bit of a cloud as that thing starts to come down, right? Not based on any shape or anything, just based on the colors that we're using up there. I'm going to take this little bit of purple, blend this bit down, but again, I'm going to leave some areas that are different up in the sky. It doesn't all have to grow and become the same color. Even the purple is darker in some areas, is lighter in some areas. And that's what's going to make you have a nice painting right there. All this stuff down here, we want to save some of these beautiful colors that we laid down in this area. You don't want to have to cover everything. So don't go too crazy. Maybe this big dark guy just wants to be a cloud that just lives out here and we just start to pull him out into our, into our thing. It's a good way to kind of spread the color out while not blending it really far. You know what I mean? Nice little way. And then you can go pretend that even this is the shadow of a cloud and go light it up with some white or do something else and make it your own and make it gorgeous. It'll be gorgeous. Maybe we'd lose a little bit of that color because we come down in here and it's just maybe those two little pieces of cloud connect now. Just from taking a little bit of purple, right? Once it's purple, you can go back into your yellow, into your orange areas without having them go green, but you don't want to go straight blue. That's why we add that purpley, darker color, uh, color on there. And so as we're working, we can start to bring in our, our kind of trap or push our our sun way off in the distance, way off in the distance. Look at that. And you can even blend these out to all one color if you wanted to, but I like leaving little things of pink and orange and purple and red and crimson and all these little beautiful things that we, we'd we initially put on the canvas. Maybe we take another little, little bit of that cloud and he's trying to come across the sun. Just a soft little thing that kind of blends into the same bit of colors that it is back here. No one really knows what it is. What's it connected to? Is it so far away that we can't tell? Is it the top of that one? Is there another one over here? Just very softly, kind of cutting into the sun or down here even. We might lose them. You never know, we might lose all of these little bits of clouds. Just like bouncing down and all of a sudden we start to create, look, even as we brought that yellow bit out, it started to lighten it up out there. You tap into that yellow and bring it out here. Or a bit of our white, man, just onto our brush. Just to brighten it up just the littlest bit. It's kind of bringing the lighting up just a small little bit of clouds back there. It's very nice, very soft, right? We're using such small pressure and such a soft amount of small paint that we can swipe over our scene and not really change too much about it because it's all been blended nice and softly. Look at that. All right, we missed this part down here, but that's okay. Now that we've got, this is mainly blue. That's why I didn't want to touch it and then go back up into all of our nice, beautiful yellows. There we go, look at that. And all of a sudden we've got this cool sky that we can sort of put together off on our, you know, in our minds back in the distance back there. There's another little bit of cloud. Just as we see it, just starts to come in off from, look, just layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. That's what's gonna make your painting sell. All these little layers of clouds, different things, especially when you light them all up a little bit differently. Oh, it's gonna be fantastic. Look at all the darkness underneath this guy now. Just because when I looked over at the other camera and, and what you guys see, I saw that and I was like, oh, that's gotta be, we have to have it. And maybe we'd lose this whole cloud. So you don't really, you know, you don't have to really stress about too many things. It's the worst part about painting is the stressing out, right? And if it's, if it's stressful, if it's not fun, you're not gonna wanna continue to do it. So I like to teach you cool little ways 
cool little tricks to paint a very cool little neat looking sky. Just like that. Let's wash these brushes off. Now we need to light these clouds up with a little bit of white. So we're gonna take a very, very, very small amount because these ones are so far away that they don't really need a whole huge amount of white. I mean, just a little bit in different places along the bottom or the top of their little shadow, right? We're gonna take our one inch brush or our two inch brush, whatever one's more comfortable for you, and just swipe across nice and flat. They're very far off in the distance. There's not a lot of detail to them, which is exactly what we want them to look like. Let's take a little bit more of that white, maybe come up here, start to shape in these guys. Just by dabbing on, leaving spaces so this paint can grow together, right? Maybe that stuff down here needs a little bit more because the sun's underneath, right? Then we're just gonna take that very, very, very softly. Very softly. If, if you do it too hard, you're gonna blend all the little differences away. And then it's not gonna look like a cloud anymore. So soft, so soft, all over the place. All right, take our two inch brush or your one inch brush. I, I recommend the two inch brush for the cloud flattening. It's very easy and quick and it's less likely to make a mistake. If the one inch brush push too hard, you can make a mistake. So let's come up in here. Maybe we had some of these guys off in here. They're a little bit closer than these far away guys. So they need to be a little bit brighter or have a little bit more paint to kind of blend with. So we'll take a little bit more, a couple more dabs in there. And this guy goes and lives off over here. You can just imagine where and when or how you want your sky to look and just start to throw them in. And they look funky, right? They're like, it doesn't look like a cloud until you start to mix it, right? There is no designated shape for a cloud. So as long as you can mix it to where you have a little bit of difference between those little colors, a little bit of shadow, a little bit of light, a little bit of difference, right? It's all about the differences. How many times did Josh say it? Is no one listening still? I mean, look, all these little things. It's got a little bit different shadow because we use that darker, bluer color versus this lighter pinkish color. You get these very soft things. The more and more and more you mix, the softer and softer and softer they become, just like this, until they disappear. Watch. Oh, it's gone. Now we've replaced it with some shadow. Ooh, that's fantastic. Too bad, you know, this bottom bit's going to be mountain. All this stuff will be mountain down here. I'm going to try to retain some of that color, though. But very, very, very cool little things. And you can just change on the fly, just like that. You don't have to, to continue on with whatever idea you had. You could see something and go, ooh, this kind of looks like this would be a neat cloud if it was like just the base of it, this gigantic thing, right? I wasn't even gonna put any more clouds in the sky until I saw this stuff. And leave it, like, look, it, the cloud is never a, a, it's just a flat thing, right? So take our paint, make some little grooves, make all these little crazy motions. And that's what's going to make it cool. Look at that as we blend it. Oh, just don't overdo, right? We're not going to overdo it. Not going to overdo it, Joshy. Just like that. And now all of a sudden we have this huge bit of cloud that's coming around the side. It's starting to come over here. I don't want it to really connect. All right, we can even take it and just continue on, just mixing. All these little colors will mix together, and you get these beautiful little bits of clouds, leaving some areas nice and light, but not too bright. The light's got to hit them somewhere, somehow. Just not too crazily, right? We don't want to go too nuts with the white. Otherwise, by the time we get to the front, our mountains aren't going to look like the snow is white because these are much brighter than the mountains. It's just not going to look right. Let's take this guy over here. Bop, 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 bop. See how we left room right there? Leaving that little gap, that little circle, because we have this bit of dark. And again, I'm not even going to use this side. I'm just kind of showing you in case you wanted to add more clouds and maybe not do a mountain. Just do... Bunch of clouds, do a cloudscape, right? Because you can do whatever you want. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do exactly what we're doing. I'm just giving you an idea. Giving you an idea, giving you the technique, going, hey, look, if you do this with that fan brush and then mix it, you make these really, really, really cool clouds. And then you go over to your painting and you go, hmm, it would look neat if my clouds look like that over here. And I did this and then poof. And then you go, hey, look what paint with Josh did to my clouds. He's awesome. And everyone else goes, yeah, he's all right. He's all right, a little bit soft. Trying to match that soft color back there. So we don't use a whole lot and we mix it very softly. 
letting it blend. Don't want these two to connect, right? They're not the same. It's not, this is all one big cloud now that it all looks relatively the same like that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. We might just put our, our mountain there and see, our, I, I, I gotta have a big one. So we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna lose a lot of that cloud, but I wanted to show you, you know, I'm the painter that shows you everything. You wanna learn how to paint a, a whole cloudscape? We'll do a whole cloudscape. I mean, we literally could. Oh my goodness, how, what a cool tutorial that would be. If we just finish this bit off with clouds and left that whole bit, just like that. <laughs> Painting done, over. Damn. That's a cool idea for another one. That's a cool idea. You're like, I wonder why Josh paints so much because I have all these wicked ideas and then I gotta get them out before I forget. Okay, a little bit of black, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of blue. Three favorite colors. All right, we're gonna mix them up. Don't want them to be any color discernible there. You want it to all look like black. Take a little bit of white, mix that in, because we're gonna make two different mountains. We gotta have one be way off in the distance, which means it needs to be a lighter color. And then the one that's closer up can be darker and it will look like it's standing out. It's gonna be fantastic, cool little trick. Okay, so two different colors of our, our mountains back here. Now I wanna go with this lighter color up through our clouds, maybe just like this, just bouncing it down, right? However, the top line, this is all we're worried about is what the top line looks like. Look, it's all jagged, it looks lovely. Lovely little jagged little thing. I hate painting just straight up, just regular old, you know, uh, pyramid style mountains, right? That's how you can tell when you're looking at a beginner painting, if it's got a pyramid style mountain, just very straight. You gotta throw these crazy little odd bits, right? These are what make it cool as you're going to do everything. <clears throat> and then this will give us a cool idea about what it's going to look like. All right, so we're going to pull it out to the side, shaping it. Look, it's growing all of a sudden, right? What if we took this guy down here and went this way? Now, now we've got this cool ridge kind of right in the center. All right, going like that. And this guy goes out over here. We just pull him out all the way out to the side. Cool, cool, cool little bit of mountain right there. All right, leaving all those little jagged areas and then depending on how we pull our brush depends on what our little mountain's gonna look like. Fantastic. And again, it's very far away, so it doesn't have to be super dark. It's not gonna be right up close to us, right? We're gonna take a little bit of white, mix it with a little bit of that grayish color that we made, just so it's a little lighter than the color is back there. That'll be our shadow, and then we'll mix a little bit more of that with some white, make it a little bit brighter. And those will be our very, very, very soft, light gray highlights. Because again, we don't want white way back here. We want white up close to us where we can see. So let's see, we're gonna come up, go like this, just bouncing down. Maybe there's a little bit of a, a, a sheer wall that lives back there, right? All sort of things you can play with in your mind as it starts to slide off. And then we come down and we can see little different, different things live in different areas. It gets lit in different areas. Just like that, starting to pull it down, letting the, the paint break on us, which is really fun and neat. Get our little dark areas in there. Now all of a sudden we've got a cool little ridge on the back side of that mountain. Just like that. We're throwing our very deep dark shadows in, which is the same color that we made the mountain out of before we blended it, right? And that way it stays nice and dark. Leads our eye to believe that it's very dark on this side of the mountain over here. Very cool. A couple little dark areas in here, little different spots where maybe the, the sun just doesn't hit down all the way. And again, this one is our, our very, very, very far away mountain, so it doesn't really matter what it's going to look like. We can tap at it a little bit, make it soft. Take our, our brush very, very, very lightly and start to swipe up in the direction of how we swipe down. Right? If we swipe down this way, we have to swipe up that way. Just like that. Just makes it a little bit further away in the distance, makes it kind of blurry, like if you were to see a a photo so the top will be nice and crisp and then you got this little blurry bottom section just like that mix it up nice and lightly and that way we didn't lose all of our color down here didn't pull it down too far and now we got our cool little piece of mountain back there very neat very cool now we're gonna use our darker color right the color that we didn't mix any white with and it's gonna stand out so crazily against this other one watch this we're gonna go like this Ooh, look at how much closer it was especially if we keep climbing when we go up, and if this mountain is taller than that mountain, well, we're gonna take a little spike, 
up like that. Now we know this one's closer. It's darker, it's closer, it's taller. Ooh, a little jaggedy top to it. I like that. Just totally accidental too. Again, pull it off very flat. You don't have to go down at a, at a severe angle. You don't want it to be all crazy. Right? And I don't really want to have a whole lot of paint down here because look at all this. Oh my. That's going to grow all in and cover up. Look at all that. That would have covered up all of this gorgeous bit of nice pink soft bit of paint that we have down there. Just scraping away all the stuff except for some of this deep dark stuff on the shadowy side, right? Let me take this guy and him, make him a little darker back there too. Just a little bit and start to shape what we want it to look like. I just don't want it to grow too far. Right? Now we're going to take this guy just by pulling and, and staying in that little area of, of misty fog that we've created. Look at that. Just push it all the way back. You don't know what goes where. Who's starting in what position over there? All right, coming down, trying to save a little bit of that orangey color as well. I don't want to pull it down too far. All right, that orange color really wants to disappear. So be careful with it. Keeping it nice and light back there, right? I didn't, I didn't touch it a whole lot with a whole lot of pressure the more pressure I give it, the more it's going to brighten up, right? Look at the size of this mountain right here, guys. That is a serious drop. Dragon's Ridge right there. Especially if that's like Godzilla coming up out of the mountain. That's kind of cool. Very cool. All right, now we're going to make a new section of color, taking a little bit of our white, a little bit of blue, coming down here and making our new bit of shadows, right? Now, blue is very powerful, so chances are you've grabbed too much blue, Go back and get some white, because I always grab too much blue. Grab a little bit of that darker gray color just to dull it down just the littlest bit. I'm going to come back over here and imagine all this stuff back here is all hidden in shadows. We can tell that from that very thick, dark bit of paint back there, right? Just mix it over a couple times until it goes nice. There we go. Don't want to overdo it. Come back a little bit more shadow. Where is it going to live? Maybe down in here. There's like a little ridge. A little bit of blue, and you can always cover over whatever you don't like, but if you don't put it there to begin with, it's gonna be a lot harder to get it to pop out when you, you know, once you've already covered it all in white, it'll be very difficult to get it to uh, pop again. Now you can see we're not putting the blue everywhere. Don't want the blue everywhere. That's gonna get in the way of all of our gorgeous white highlights. We just want it in areas where maybe there might be a little bit of shadow. Just a little. Right now, again, we're not going to do that whole thing in pure white. We've got to take a little bit of this blue, just the smallest bit again. And as we mix it up, it's going to become very bright compared to what we had over here, right? And then we're going to grab that up. Now, this is a bluish white, but it's going to look dead straight white as we put it up against all the rest of this stuff. And look as we pull down, right? My, look, I'm leaving, I'm leaving marks with my gloves and my fingers right here. Touch, look, they're pink, touching the canvas because my knife is so flat to the canvas that I'm dragging my fingers into the paint right down here into our gorgeous water. You have to have the right angle to get it to break and pull out and have these gorgeous little bits of, of snow breakage. They're fantastic. And then we're going to decide and we've got a little bit more snow on this side of our mountain. So you start to come down and flatten out around his bottom, right? Just like that. The more and more you go over it, the more it's going to mix in. And it's going to look further away, so you can't have, you know, the best of both worlds. If you're going to have this thick mountain up here, you got to make sure that your highlights stay bright, that your shadows stay deep, and it doesn't all mix into one, you know, singular color. That's a very cool bit of mountain, though, right there. A little bit more white, mix it in with that same little blue pile, just so it's not perfectly bright white. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be this gorgeous white color. We want to save our whites for later. Just pulling straight down again. Just kind of, ooh, there's like a little cave in that mountain back in there. All right. All, every little piece that we touch and pull on, that's deciding what our mountain is going to look like to our viewers. So, be careful. 
Yeah, just like that. It looks like a bear claw almost. It's kind of cool. Bear claw mountain, I might call this one. Very soft, very gentle. Again, you don't want to lose those shadows. If you do, you got to go back in and add just that little bit of color difference in there and just that little bit of bright blue. It's almost like a frozen glacier back here. Might have to change this one from Sunset Mountain to, or Sunrise Mountain to Sunrise Glacier, man. Okay, a little bit more of our whitish snowy color. Come down, we're gonna slide over the top of that, pull it out flat down here, just like that. Woo, man, that is a gorgeous little mountain right there. Okay, again, tapping very softly just to make the, the bottom edge soft. I don't wanna try to pull the paint anywhere. I don't wanna lose all this gorgeous kind of bluish pinkish orangish color that we have going on. It's fantastic. Tapping this guy is gonna extend him because we didn't do anything to that paint. We never pulled it out. It's still very thick over here. There we go. Gonna blend out any little striations we have very softly over our bit of bright color. That's fantastic right there. That is fantastic. Now it just seems like our little ridge though, just it wants to just grow even more, it wants to come down here maybe. Taking all that dark color with it. Right? Not all of the dark color, you don't have to use a whole big chunk. Because remember, we have it on the brush and it's gonna wanna grow as we swipe it and soften it, right? Now we can't really tell which side is which and what is happening over here. That's very cool. Just like that, very softly, kind of guiding our ridge, guiding your eye down. To think there would be a little bit of a ridge down in here. We can bring it down as far as we want. There's nothing stopping us from going all the way down to this color and covering over everything and just doing it all in snow and not having any water. Like there's nothing stopping us from doing that. You have to remember that. Like this is our scene. You can do whatever you want on this bit of canvas and it can look totally different than mine and it's going to it's going to look totally different it's going to be fantastic that's the best part about art is the how much everyone's differs and just how awesome it looks when they do these little differences right like take the little smallest bit because every so often you might get a little bit of light shine down on the back side of your mountain right it's never all going to be just pure dark shadow Maybe every so often we get a little bit of light, just like that, little bits down there that light up for some reason. All you need. And you have to do the sound, just like that. That's what makes it work. All this bit gets lit up, and now we've got our little water down here. I like that. We take our soft little bit of land, and right down onto the water comes our mountain path. And the base of our little mountain back there. It's fantastic. All right, let's take a little bit of dark. All we need is a little line. And we're gonna decide where, there we go, where our, uh, our bit of water lies. And it lies just like that. And that is the base of our mountain. It's where it comes down, where it attaches to whatever's going on. Oh, it almost looks like we could throw a waterfall in there. Oh my. Especially if we got rid of this line. Right, we went like this. Straight down, man. Oh, that's gonna look gorgeous. We might have to do that. I might just be changing my mind, right? Now I always preach it. You gotta, you gotta practice what you preach, Josh. You wanna change your mind, you change your mind. And we're gonna throw a waterfall in here. It's gonna be fantastic. All right, so if our water was over there, maybe our river would come this side, just for my waterfall perspective, to about there, and then we're gonna come down. Sort of like that, sort of. Sort of, sort of. Very softly leaving my little lines just so I can tell what I wanna do. You can do all sorts of stuff. Man, that is great. I don't know that I even really want to do a waterfall now. It still looks so great. If we had this bit down here, just so lightly, just to give the impression that there's a little bit of a, a um, new section of water line here, but it looks kind of funky, right? 
And it's because it's got to come out to an area where it's straight. And in order to do that, we have to hide some of what's behind there, right? You've got to hide it. Otherwise, it looks weird. If you're like, why does my painting look weird? This is probably why. Because your perspective is, is off, right? We're never going to see the whole bit of waterline. You never will, even if you're looking, unless you're looking at it from above. And if we're looking at it from above, the mountains don't look like this, right? If you're looking at them from up here. So you can't look at your water from up here and look at your mountains from here. It's, that's why it doesn't work. This guy wants to grow. We're going to pull him down. We have a little bit of reflection on our water, perhaps, if we can get it to work right. All right boom, boom, boom. Now, we don't know where the land is until we come back in and decide maybe it's there to match up with the rest of our bit of water, right? So, all about perspective. I say it all the time. All the time. Again, taking the smallest little bit of that black line, pulling it down just so it's very soft. Shh, trying to save any bit of pink we can still save. Save the pink, Josh. Save the pink. The more and more we mix, the more it's going to go away. So, let's see here. We need to come in. We really need to add a water line. I mean, we could put a little bit of white out here. It's really not going to make that big difference between having it there or not having it there. And that was just some pure titanium white, just so it stayed nice and thick. Speaking of pure titanium white, let's go back up here. And we'll do a one that came just out of a cloud. Just like that. Out of a cloud and into another cloud. That looks pretty cool. I saw that today. I was standing outside work. And uh, I looked up at the sky and I was like, oh, that's cool. It's like a chemtrail coming out of a, or a contrail for you conspiracy theorists. It's a condensive trail of cloud coming out of one thing and going into another from an airplane. It looked really neat. So, of course... If Paint with Josh sees it in real life, then we have to do it. That's the way it goes. All right. Let's add in our foreground. That includes making a lot of big trees. So we need to mix up a lot of paint, blue, black, and crimson, all onto the palette, all nasty, all right here. And let's not forget our brown for our tree trunks. That's why we got it out, and I always forget. So Grab a dark color fan brush if you have one. I have several. They all end up being dark colored because I forget and just grab the same one to add more dark shadow. Okay, now we're going to come over here. We're going to make a tree a little bit smaller, if not the same size as our mountain, right? It doesn't have to be humongous, but we need to bring it down below where our water line is so we have some land to sit on. Okay, we're going to go through our paint again just a slit, slight little bit. Come over here. I don't want to fight with all the thickness of the of the snow on the mountain. So we're gonna go off to the edge over here. Okay? Gonna come up just with the corner, just very lightly, dabbing on this thick, nasty paint. Look at all those gross little fingers, right? Flip the brush over, use the other side. All these little things are just like little fingery bits, all all mad. Just like if you were to tap it and you have all those cool little things on the palette, that's what you want it to look like coming off the canvas. That's going to grab a whole lot of paint and a whole lot of, uh, you're going to have a whole lot of differences in your highlight color just based off of all these little bits are going to grab something different. It's going to be way cool. All right, same thing over here. Just the top, just the tip of the brush on a severe angle. And then as we come down, you can start to build and go from side to side. And now, by now, we're starting to use the whole brush, the whole bristle. See how I like that? Even one and a half. Bam, bam, bam. Again, you only get about five to ten little dabs before you don't have enough paint anymore. So go back, flip it over, make sure it's nice and nasty, block out all that stuff over there. And it's always fun if we cover over just a bit of the sides with our branches. Helps our tree grow over here. Watch this. We'll put one over here just on the, on the edge of the canvas right here, right on the corner. Right, a couple little branches out on our side, a couple little branches out on his side, cover in the bottom, and just like that, a cool little bit of a tree right on the side. 
Bam, bam, bam. All right, now we're gonna take our brush and just literally make a big mess with it. Look at, look at all those gorgeous little bits of bushes and little things that poke out. They're fantastic, cool little things. Almost covering all of our water line back there, right? Or again, we want it to be super thick. We wanna have some area where our, our highlight color can grip onto. You can imagine this would be our land down here as we start to pull out all that color. All right, so we'll come over here. You wanna pull it out, you wanna pull it out flat though. You don't wanna have it be too crazy. It doesn't wanna have a crazy angle. That's gonna hurt you. If it's got a really sharp angle, that's really gonna hurt. Just like that, that's gorgeous. Just leave it like that, Josh, that is fantastic. Okay, I love the color capture we got right in here, it's fabulous. Now we need to come over here, make a tree just a little bit taller than our mountain is on this side. And you don't have to fill in the whole thing, right? And we sat it down a little bit lower than we did over there. You don't have to fill in the whole bit of tree, right? And come in, have a couple little bits, maybe jump down a little, little area there. It could be a nice little thin little guy, sparse little tree, right? You just gotta make it look right. If it doesn't look correct, then it's gonna look funky that it's so sparsely, right? Cool little things. Doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be, you know, not all the bristles have to touch, doesn't have to be on the same angle, it doesn't have to cover everything behind it, it doesn't have to do anything. Just like that, bring out our last little guys down here. And then again, this is just the base shadow, right? It's not our, this isn't our tree in all of its glory. Look at all those beautiful little bits of trunk that are stuck out. Fabulous. It was a little bit too thin for how thick it was like that. So we're going to take that guy, grab him at the bottom. Look, ooh, see? I'm pulling him out of it. this other angle now creates our little bit of land. What's happening down in here? Now, there was one thing. What was I looking at? Here we go. Almost missed it. If we're going to have white up there, let's just have the smallest little bit of white at least somewhere off in the distance out there. And again, it doesn't have to be everywhere. Just like that is fine, totally fine. You don't want it to be perfect and it doesn't have to be perfectly visible. Just even that little smudge, because we know what it is. It's a little bit of water splashing over there. You know what I mean? We already know what it is. That would look really cool if we did that, but I don't know, I don't know. All right, let's make up the last little bit of our tree color in here. And then once all of our trees are laid out, we can go back and highlight them. You could do them one at a time if you wanted to, and you could change, and you'd get a cool little, little bit of difference. You know what I mean? I'm all about that. Being different. Be different. Be bold. Somebody said, what should I do? I was like, be bold. Try something. Try something new. See what, it, see what happens when you do that. Let's see. We need this guy. He's got to come up and cut off our... Uh, Chemtrail, let's try to stay away from. I want to keep this bit of blue because it looks amazing. So let's cut right over the top of this guy right here. Okay, we're gonna come in. Pushing down, pushing hard. Oh, just like that. And that way it drags all this paint out of the way of our tree. All right? Come down at this angle. I love these little guys on angles. I don't know why. Don't ask me why, I just like it on an angle. <laughs> I don't know why. What we need to do first though, get a little bit of our snow and just start to dump it in. All right, we can always go back and fix the tree. Don't worry about it. If you did your tree already, you can always fix it. Take the snow, dump it on, right? It doesn't even have to look nice because we're going to make it soft. Look, oh, it's gonna stretch, it's gonna grow. Again, you can come in front of your tree, it doesn't matter, right? And then we'll go back and fix it, it's all good. All good, as long as there are differences. Look at these little differences. Some of them are a little brighter than others. It's almost like there's a little bit of ridge right there. It's very cool. I wonder what yours looks like, right? You could add another little bit of uh, uh, a bush down here or anything you wanted, right? We'll just continue it on over here. Go back, grab our knife, grab up another bunch of white and just smoosh it on. Smoosh, 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 smoosh. Take our brush, just very lightly again. Bam, 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 bam. 
And the more you mush it, right, the more little cool little things are going to happen. And you can get awesome little bits of light and dark and differences to happen, right? Now, our tree looks kind of funky. It's floating. Yeah, let's come down. We're going to push him through all that stuff again. Just pushes it back. You don't remember, you don't have to be upset with it. You don't have to hate it. You can always do something with it. So, let's take our kind of odorless thinner on our liner brush into our little pile of shadowy paint that we created the tree limbs with. And I wonder if this brush is going to play ball or not. Little bits of tree branches all over the place. Oh, it's like a, this is a weird little funky brush. There we go. It's got like the bristles are, uh, are damaged on it. So they're gonna act very differently. Look at that, it just split into two little branches like that, just all on its own. So now, what are we gonna do, Joshy? Right, just sit there and make it look how you like. And once it looks how you like it, leave it alone. There we go. You gotta remember if it's nice and thick on the tree branch, you have to make your tree trunk a little thicker as well. Even if you gotta go all the way down and make it a little bit wider, that's what you gotta do. Otherwise, it's just gonna look funky. Why don't we come off here, ending up in this area, staying away from any of the thick bits of snow that would kind of trap our little tree branch. It wouldn't allow them to grow upright. There we go. Just very soft little things. Another little branch off that guy over there. Who knows? Cool, cool, cool. All right, when you come up into all this thick paint, it gets very difficult to keep your branch discernible away from the mountain, right? You have to use a whole lot of paint thinner. And it is difficult even for me. So that's why I always say try to stay away from the areas where the mountain is nice and thick. You don't want to go there with your liner brush. It's not a happy place. There we go. Just like that. Cool little things happening in this tree. Our little jabber poker stick that comes out and hits me in my shoulder every time I'm on a, a pipe, which is rarely ever, but still it happens. It happens. Let me put a little, little bit of bushiness around the bottom of this guy, just so we have something for our brush to grab when we start to pull out, just like that. Start to mix it in with that kind of Whitish snowy bit underneath our tree. Very cool. Very neat. All these differences in color. Doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to have differences. Now let's get a little bit of our brown, a little bit of our white. And look at that, we didn't forget to do the tree trunk this time. Because we usually do. Now I never like it to be too white and I always end up grabbing too much white. Again, the brown is not very powerful against the white. The white will want to take over. And we're going to come into the middle, just kind of touching, pulling away at different spots in our tree. And that way you'll be able to tell, hey, there's a, there's a bit of trunk holding that guy up. And this guy is much thicker over here. And just like that, a little bit on the edge. And when you actually touch this, you'll be able to feel those thick bits of trunk in there. This guy, why don't we go with our our dark brown around from the back side. We'll pull it around the back like that. And then we'll get a little bit of our lighter color and wrap it around the front. Just like that. Whole little bit of tree coming up there. Now, if you don't marble your paint, you're gonna have all this one color, right? We like to marble it, meaning kind of going over it until it doesn't look perfect. I don't like it to be so super perfect or bright. Right? It's never like that out in the wild. It's gonna be a little different every time you look at it, every time you paint it. 
it's going to be a little different. So all you got to do is, you know, work at it until you like what it looks like. And then you're done with your painting. It's so simple like that. You don't even have to, you don't have to stress. You don't have to worry about what this guy's going to think or what that guy's going to think. As soon as you're done with it, you are done. Your day is over. And you can go sit back on the couch and relax and chill. It's going to be fantastic, right? And don't ever let anybody tell you your tree doesn't look like a tree or it wouldn't look like that. Because art is art. That's my feeling. Art is art. You know what I mean? Your art's fantastic. My art's fantastic. Someone's going to see something that they like about your painting or they're going to see something they don't like about my painting, this, that, or the other. It's always going to be like that. So don't worry about it. Don't overstress. And that's Paint with Josh in a nutshell right there. Fantastic, these little guys. All we're doing is just touching with a little bit of that brown, trying to create a little tiny little bit of texture. When you really get good with the knife, you'll be able to really do it. I'm not even saying I'm good enough with the knife yet. So, just like that. Sometimes maybe we use a smaller side, but all you need is just a little bit of that extra brown color on the edges of some of our little bits of branch. Very simply and easily, just like that, we get a very cool scene, guys, very cool. One of my favorites. I love painting this scene. It, it keeps selling, so I'm gonna keep painting it. So it's fantastic to me. Now, a little bit of our white, liquid white, sorry, I'm gonna come in into our white paint right here. Snag a little swipe of blue, because again, we don't want it to be so pure white. At least I don't. We're gonna come up here, kind of touch vertically on the tips of our treetops, so they have a little bit of white to them. And then we're gonna come over, and we're not gonna to touch our, we're not gonna cover up all of the shadows, right? We didn't come here to cover up everything. Bam, 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 bam. Just like that, leaving some of those other shadows in there. All right, we're gonna flip over the brush, try to do it on this guy. Little dabs, come down. And I like pressing up because it gives the trees more of an uplifting feel to me. These guys right here, just kind of turn our brush on the side. Hit them a couple times with something. It doesn't need to be a whole lot. It really doesn't. And you don't want it to be so super bright either. It doesn't have to stand out crazily bright. All right, wipe all that off the, uh, off the brush. Back into the liquid white, back up here into the same color. We have our gorgeous little snowy scene. Pop right there, come in, tap, tap, tap. Just lighting up half of those shadows. We don't want to light up all the shadows. And you don't even have to be on the shadows. A lot of the times I'm above where the shadow is. Just like we do in a wave. Just like that, nice soft little bit of tree. Very lightly finishing off the rest. It doesn't have to be super bright around the bottom either. Right. Take some of that if there's any more. There's no more white paint on there. Thought we were going to have a little bit of white. There we go. Take this guy. A couple little deals, little doers. A little here, a little there. Just like that. Got a very cool little tree. You could even take a little bit of white, if you wanted to, to just brighten up like one side of our tree. And then we'd have a kind of a white side, or maybe a little bit of frost. We got frozen over. It is a cold, cold day. The sunrise is trying to warm us up, but it is a cold day out here in the forest, folk. That's very neat. Right, a little bit of that white, maybe sat it up on top of the branches. Just enough to catch. Doesn't have to cover the whole the whole thing. You don't want it to cover the whole thing anyway. Again, you just work at it until who likes it? Until you like it. Like that, I like. I like that right there. A little bit of white just on the edge. Uh, this guy in there, boom. Just to show him it's on the side of the tree that I want him to be on. It's fantastic. Gotta have a little bit of shadow everywhere we go, we gotta have shadow. So if you have a little bit of light color, you gotta have a little bit of shadow underneath it. Just like that. And not every single branch has to be high lit either. 
That is not a rule that says everything's got to be high lit, because it does not. You can have a dark, shadowy piece. You can have a little bit that's lit up. You can have all sorts of stuff happening in your scene. And guess who's the only person that's got to like it? You. That's it. I got our little tree branch sticking out again. It's fantastic. All right. Let's see. Let's get rid of this brush, because that's not the brush we want to use. Come into our liquid paint thinner, grab up a little bit of that darker color on the teeniest, tiniest little brush that I have. And then we'll come up here. Where is my mall stick? Ah, it's over there. So what happens when I do all these live events everywhere and then I don't get a chance to get everything unpacked. Oh, we're gorgeous in this one. Nice and small. Sharp edges to our feathers. Woo! Fantastic. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit of that liquid white on the brush. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to sign it. And then I'm going to cut you loose. I'm going to cut you loose. Come over here. Just a little guy. Bam. I dig it. I dig it. I love the sky in this one. It's fantastic. Fantasmic little sky. Gorgeous little thing. There we go. There's just too much of that liquid white in there. And not enough little shadowy color. So I had to add a little bit more. Just a touch. Just the littlest touch. And then we come back. Poof. Well, I'm exhausted, guys. It's super hot up here, and I really hope you enjoyed this nice, cool painting. Try to cool us down a little bit. I hope you finish yours. Send it into facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. We love seeing them. Uh, I love sitting around watching them pop up in my feed and, and screenshotting them and saving them for our big fan appreciation post. So if you want your painting seen by almost 10,000 people, make sure you uh, <laughs> tag us by posting at Paint with Josh, and then selecting me from the list. Man, I just can't even speak anymore. So, uh, until we see you guys again next time, either Fridays for Friday Night Freestyle, Sunday for Sunday Seascapes, or Wednesdays when we put out videos like this, or five seconds from now when this video restarts, and you uh, start to paint the painting over, or continue on, or rewind, or whatever, I want to say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the love and the comments and the stars. Make sure you're liking and sharing and sending it to your grandma. And until we see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And ba -ba -ow! Ba boom all the new paintings that people are posting all the time, trying all the tutorials. So I hope you come back for more. I hope this one was easy. And until we see you again, in, <laughs> until we see you again, in, until we see you again next time, either Friday night freestyle, Sunday seascapes, Wednesday we put this video out. <laughs> so until we see you again, until we see you again next time, either Friday night freestyle, Sunday seascapes, where we do a... <laughs> Thursday, Friday, Tuesday, Monday, every single day of the week, uh, or five seconds from now when you start the video over and you rewatch it and try to paint it. So uh, until we see you again next time. Well, guys, I've got a mountain of brushes to go clean up, so I want to thank you for tuning in, for checking out this painting, for trying it, for attempting it, for sending it in. And uh, I love seeing them. I love... Well, guys, I have a mountain of brushes to go clean up. I really hope you enjoyed this painting. I had a lot of fun putting it together. Uh, and so until I see you again... <laughs> Welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a beautiful 16 by 20 inch sunrise mountain version number five. They keep selling, so I'm going to keep painting them. And obviously we make the sky and everything a little bit different every time we do it. So I'm glad you guys clicked on this video. That means you want to... I'm glad you clicked on this video. That means you want to check it out. You want to... So I'm happy you clicked on this video. Check the description down below. Find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. you want your painting seen by thousands of people then uh, try it try it out and send it in or post it or tag uh, me when you post it so i can see it and uh, make sure you get your ridiculous. five seconds from now when the video restarts and you start to paint it and re-watch it again uh, i want to say thank you and well guys i've got a mountain of brushes to go clean up so i want to thank you for tuning in for trying this one out for sending it into facebook we love seeing when you guys try one and send it in or post it make sure you tag at wait well, guys, I've got a mountain of brushes to go clean up. So I hope you enjoyed this painting. I really hope you try it. You send it into Facebook, and uh, I love seeing them when you post them.